chapter 16, the story of the Philippian jailer. And I want to use it tonight, and I want to preach on the subject, a very unusual church service. Look at Acts chapter 16 and verse 23, and look how this service came about and what happened at this very unusual church service. Verse 23, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, that's Paul and Silas, they beat them, y'all, they beat them. Uh, so you ain't too bad off. Uh, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Think about this, 12 o'clock at night now, 12 o'clock at night, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Listen now. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself. He's going to commit suicide right there, supposing the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light. That's a good idea right there. And sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Let's look at that little story tonight. A very unusual church service. This service was in an old, dirty, dingy, dark jail cell. A jailer is sitting there uh, at night and had actually gone to sleep as this story took place. Now, I want to say first of all tonight, this service was held at a very unusual place, a jail. You wouldn't think a big, great service like this would be. You thought it would be in a church, in that church down there, in that church over here. It was in the jail when God had this wonderful service. I've, I've preached in jails many times. I've preached in some unusual places. And uh, I, I, I preached a revival one time at Craggy Prison over in Asheville, North Carolina. Does anybody ever remember the old craggy prison? I don't know, it's probably closed down uh, now, I think. But Brother Wayne and me had a mutual friend by the name of Brother Delane Woody. And Woody knew the chaplain over there in Swannanoa. And he said, I got this young preacher that, and he talked me up. He went everywhere talking me up. Boy, you got, and then somehow now they got me in there. And I was about, I was about 20 three, four years old, and I went in to preach at Craggy Prison. I'd never been to prison in my life, and I'd seen them, never actually been in one. And I remember walking in there, you could feel the devil, buddy. And I met them big old bars, them old green, they always got them ugly green paint on them, them jail cells. And I remember that jailer, he opened one door, and I remember I was walking through there, and I looked and seen that big fence, and then it goes out like this, and got those wires, Bob wire that goes around and around. And the whole time I was thinking, can I get through there? Reckon I could get out of here. If I could climb up that, I might could slither through that. And I thought, I would hate to be locked up in that place. Because you climb that fence, it starts going back like that. Anybody in here ever tried to escape out of a prison? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> see, you made it, brother. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, anyway, glad you're here with us tonight. Uh, but uh, anyway... Uh, I, uh, I, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, you couldn't get out of here. And we went in one door. Then we went down a hall into another building in another door. And they, them keys was that long. And they'd stick them big old thing in our 
pow. And them big thick doors about that. And he pulled that door open like that. And I remember thinking, my, 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 my. And we went in there and I heard that thing go clang behind me. And I thought him, I thought it was Clint Eastwood uh, in that old, old uh, cool hand loop or, or something like that. My daddy used to watch. That old, well, they put them him in, in jail, and I never been in jail. And, uh, and uh, oh, it was an awful feeling. I remember thinking, man, I don't like this. I can't get out of here. It would be awful. And I just tried to think how bad it would be to think that's your life. Well, anyway, we got in there. Them guys come in there them first few nights, and, I mean, they packed that place out. It was about as big as maybe a fourth of these two say about this from here back probably about 150 people they packed that thing out they got to singing it got good I preached I preached Tuesday night Wednesday night Thursday night we had office time every was. and uh we had a great church, better than a lot of churches I've been in, in that jail service. It was an unusual place. In this jail, these jails back in these days, uh, nearly 2,000 years ago, 40 and 50 and 60 A.D., I mean, jail was no picnic. Old dingy place, there'd be rats running across there. If you got anything, it'd be leftover, stale bread, uh, I mean, roaches, hey, you, you got sick, that's tough. Uh, you just died. It wasn't like, you know, you got all your rights and everything like that. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. Well, it was hell in a very unusual place. I have preached. I have preached in fish camp. I have preached on the street many, many, many places. I have preached right in the middle of downtown Myrtle Beach. I preached in the time in the middle of Atlanta. I preached right in the middle of Charlotte. I preached in Knoxville, where these guys are from. I preached in Chicago. I preached in over in Kingsport, Tennessee, and in Gatlinburg, and Haiti, and Canada, and Germany, and Ireland. And I, I preached. In, I've been in some weird. I've been in some services that were in a very unusual place. One night when we was in Haiti, they said, we're going to take you guys out where they've never even seen a white man's face. And I said, uh, okay. And we got and rode as far as we could go and then got out and walked. I walked through a path up over a hill. And I, you can hear them drums beating. Boom, 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 boom. And I mean, they people come out. It wasn't even no, wasn't even no roof. It was just like in the jungle, just like in a Tarzan movie. And boy, they was around there. And they said, don't touch that tree. There's this big old tree right here. They said, that tree's got a curse on it. And if you touch that tree, you will die. And the whole time we was there, I said, I'm going to go over and touch it. I'm going to go over and touch it. And I, I, maybe you won't touch it when they said it had a curse on it and I'd die. And I never did get my nerve up. I thought, man, what if I did die out here in the middle of nowhere? And, but I wanted to go over and touch that tree. But anyway, I mean, you talk about an unusual place. Do you know what I found out? I found out God is always there. He said, we're two or three gathered together in my name. There I'll be in the midst of them. Hallelujah. You don't have to be in a big building with a steeple on top. It can be two old rednecks out here that's parking a lot of McDonald's and get together in Jesus' name and the power of the Holy Ghost and that book right there. And you can have church in a most unusual place. It was an unusual place. Old buddy Cargill, he is a preacher. He started a church in a chicken coop, literally in a chicken coop, up in Maryland. There's still a church there today. I've been there, uh, up in, in those areas and seen where some of those guys are. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an unusual place. Not only that, it was held at an unusual time. 12 o'clock at night started. Now, the story went like this. Paul and Silas were out here preaching. The Bible says, the word of God says, and somebody said, get them out of here. These guys are preaching against the, the Jewish synagogue. And says, Arrest them. They're against Roman law. We don't like them guys. We don't like the feeling we get when they're around. There's something weird about them people. Get them out of here. So they took Paul and Silas in here, says, you gonna quit preaching? No. And so they put them up there and tied them like this right here and take them whips and go flap. 
like that. And you know, you've heard that how they whipped Jesus. You've heard them stories, and I don't know about all of that, but they said they whipped them with them leather straps like that, had them rot and sharp glass in there, and it come across their back like that, and jerked them things, and when you did, it would cut into their body and open it up. Sometimes their guts would fall out uh, right there while he's still alive. And they beat Paul and Silas and they had blood on their back and put them in jail. And they put them in stocks like this. They put one on their feet and one on their hand. And they didn't have no nice chair like this. Up against an old coal wall, moss, water dripping down, rats running across your toe. Then my mom said, you're supposed to burn everything a rat touches. I thought, what if they run them on my feet, Mom? Don't burn my feet off. Uh, and she said, she said, the Bible says, burn everything a rat touches. And I said, no, we can't do that. And what, burn the house down. And, and I, uh, they put them in there like this. And they put them like that right there. And they set them in jail. Now, you got mad at God because your car tore up or because your kid got the flu or you lost your job and won't even serve him. These guys were sitting in jail with their hands bound and their feet bound and Paul looked over and said, Silas, God's been good, ain't he, in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dream as I go to sleep each night. And Silas said, Amen, Brother Paul. Now, in the other room that evening, there was a jailer who worked there, the guy that was in charge of the jail, just like, you know, you've seen in the old westerns, one man be sitting in there in charge of the jail. He was there when they brought them guys in. And he said, uh, what are they booking these guys for? They're preachers. Preachers? Are they drug dealers? No. Robbers? No. Murderers? No. They're preachers. Oh, they're harmless. Don't pay no attention to them. And one walked by and he said, uh, here, I'll leave you a track. Go on, get on out of here. And they put Paul and Silas back there and throwed them in this jail. Now, it got 11 o'clock and that guy got off work. And the second shift, a third shift man came in. That's this jailer that we talked about tonight. So he comes in and says, What's up, John? He said, oh, ah, not much. Just the usual thing. Got anything new back there? Ah, oh, there's a couple of guys back there, number number seven. Uh, no, sale number seven back there. Don't pay no attention to them. They're just a couple of preachers. They're harmless. He said, all right, all right. See you tomorrow, John. He left. That guy sat down there. And he got his deck of cards out. And he started flipping over there. Ace of spades. Uh, he's doing playing solitaire. And he's playing this game of solitaire like that. Wasn't no TV. Wasn't no telephone. Wasn't no iPad. Wasn't no internet. Wasn't, some of you would have died. And uh, he put the, the, cord, uh, the cards out like this. And he put, they flipped that card. And he's playing there. And the Bible said at midnight, Paul and Silas sang. And boy, they looked over at each other. And Paul said, Silas. You know, God, we ought to thank God that we've been counted worthy to suffer just a little bit like our Lord did. Oh, hallelujah, what an honor to suffer for his name. And Silas said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And about that time, these guys in number six took their cups and started banging on the, on the bar. Shut up! And the jailer looked down and said, what in the world's going on down there? He could hear somebody hollering, shut up. And he could hear somebody singing Amazing Grace. And he said, man, I ain't heard that song in a jail. I ain't never heard that. And about that time, they said, he got to that next verse, said, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, about that time up in heaven, the Lord was listening. You see, you may not have a big crowd down here, but if he's in your church service, that's all that matters. And the Lord is up there. He said, uh, mm, sing it, brethren. And more they got on that second verse, and the Lord couldn't hold back. He went, yeah. And when he did that, that jail began to shake like that, buddy. And that thing began to 
Lord in mercy, that's a heavy jail. And he, 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 he began to shake like that right there. And that thing began to, and the Bible said that thing would jump up there like that. And all of a sudden, the door flew open. And the stocks fell off their hand. And their feet got loose. And they jumped up and went, Woo! Free at last! And buddy, they jumped up there and had a hallelujah time. And the servant got out there. And that guy looked down and said, Oh my God. Because then, if you let the prisoners get loose, they killed you. He knew he'd die. So he come out like this, took his sword, and was getting ready to stab himself, and was that close to dying and going to hell. It was hell at an unusual time. It's no accident that we're having all-night prayer meeting this coming Friday night. Boy, I'd like to have, listen, they sung the jailhouse rock before Elvis ever got off his baby formula. I'm telling you something, brother. I mean, the Lord shook that place and the jail rocked and the power of God fell and the bands were loose and the doors flew open and the prisoners come out and said, man, we're free. Can I say something here tonight? You don't have to have professional singing. You don't have to have instruments. You don't, we don't have to have a set of drums. We don't have an electric guitar. We don't have to have lights and smoke and blues smoke all over the place. All we need is some people who are a bit full of God and get up and sing from our heart. And God Almighty will reach down and shake people to their very soul. Paul jumped out of there and he said, Whoa! Hold it! Chill out, man! We're all here! And the guy was that close to killing himself. Had his knife right there. And he run down through there and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He asked the number one question. That's what they ought to ask all the high school graduates. That's what they ought to ask all the college graduates. It was accompanied by an unusual power and there was an unusual request. Ask that to Miss America. Miss, Miss whoever, South Carolina, North Carolina, Michigan. What must you do to be saved? Ask that. Let that be the question. That's the number one question. That's what we need. Throw them cards down. Come running in there and said, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to be saved. You see, all is vain unless the spirit yeah. of the Holy One comes. You know why we're going to pray Friday night? We're going to pray Friday night because I believe with all of my heart that if people will get our hearts right and get in tune with the Lord, that his spirit will come. As we sing and preach. I know it's true, y'all. That's the only way I know how to operate. People tell me all the time, Brother Danny, do you know what they're doing here? Do you know what they're doing there? There's nothing wrong with that. If somebody wants to do that, that's their business. But I know one thing. that I'm like David when they try to put that armor on him. I'm like that, brother. I ain't proved all this new junk. But I tell you one thing, brother. I know something that'll work. And it'll get any nut in Burke County. It'll get any person in North Carolina, South Carolina. And that's a preacher full of the Holy Ghost. And a choir with a touch of God on it. And conviction around That'll get the job done. That'll get it done. If that don't do it, I don't know nothing else that will. We're living in a time of this emergent church. And I'm telling you, you talk about a bunch of idiots. There's people. I'm, I'm going to teach on it after the youth rally. We're going to take Sunday nights, and I'm going to talk about the emergent church. There's a leader called Brian McLaren. I don't mind calling his name out because he's a heretic. You can look it out up on, on YouTube. Brian McLaren. Tony Campello, Campolo, whatever his name is, a writer, and people's crazy. You know what they're teaching now? They're teaching that truth is relative and that it changes from generation to generation. So what was true for the people hundreds of years ago may not be true for us now. You want it in plain English? It's all right to be a homosexual and there ain't no hell. That's where it's headed. That's where the churches are headed. That's where the churches around here are headed. They're headed in that direction. They're saying about the teachings of, you know what he got on there and said? He said, hellfire is inconsistent with the teaching of Jesus. Because Jesus is love. And Jesus' main message is that of love. And hellfire is inconsistent with that. I said, well, 
Jesus taught hell fire too. How come love ain't inconsistent with that? Now, I, you can't just pick out what parts of Jesus you want to let look at and let the rest of it go. You can't, somebody said, they all believe in heaven but don't believe in hell. Hell is symbolic. Let me tell you something, buddy. The same old book that said there's a heaven said there's a hell. If, heaven's, if hell's symbolic, hell must be symbolic. You know what the guy said? He said this. He said, if Jesus Christ comes back and burns up the earth and scatters his enemies and flame and fire taking vengeance, he said, he's nothing but a jihadist. He said, ain't no different than Jesus and a jihadist. A Muslim jihad, if he's going to come back and do what they do. That's their mindset nowadays. You know what he said? Listen carefully. He said, when my wife does something wrong and tells me, asks me to forgive her, I don't say, okay, I forgive you, and then go over here and kick my dog and take out my wrath on my dog so I can forgive her. He said, if God had to take out his wrath on Jesus on the cross before he could forgive us, God is a, is a divine child abuser. That's what he said. He called God the Father an abusive child abuser. He said, God ain't much if he can't just forgive us without having to kick his son. You know what that is? That's heresy. I'm telling you, it was necessity that Christ died for our sin to pay the price for our sin. Justice demanded that sin be paid for. Man, don't know God talk like that. Somebody talks like that, don't know God. It's blasphemy to say God was child abusing Jesus when he put him on the cross. That's blasphemy. Paul said, look at here, boys. All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's it. And he is saved. Finally, they were met with a very unusual result. Man got saved. He said, thank you, fellas. And, and I don't know what they done with the rest of them prisoners. I'm assuming that he made them all get back in there and locked them back up. I'm assuming that. I don't really know. Bible don't say. After this little service they had here, I don't know, all them other guys standing around there, they should have just took off. And they might have. I don't know. But probably, they said, all right, everybody back in. And everybody had to get back in, locked them back up. And he said, look, y'all, teach me the Bible. I want to know the Bible. And by this time, you know, it got early in the morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock that morning, he got, he got out. He took Paul and Silas with him. The first shift man come in, man, you ain't going to believe what anything unusual happened tonight, John. It sure did. We had an earthquake. God shook the jail. I got saved, and I'm taking the preacher home to meet my wife. You, you've been drinking, ain't you, son? He said, no, it's really happened. And he took them, them guys home, and his wife fixed them something to eat, and they all had a, a good meal together. The evidence of being full of the Holy Ghost is taking the preacher home and feeding him. If that's true, there's no hope for most of you people. None whatsoever. But anyway, that's what he done. He took Paul, he took Silas, they took them home, they fed them, and brother, they had a hallelujah time. It was an unusual service. You know what I'd like to see? And I'm through. Miss Desi, come on. You know what I'd like to see? I like to see the Lord do something unusual. Yeah. Something that people would say, that was God did that. Amen. Not not Brother Danny, not not shining light. And you know, I mean, we have all this stuff. We're going to have the motorcycle. Todd's going to be ready, Lord willing. Dak's going to be ready, Lord willing. I'm going to be ready, Lord willing. We're planning up some other funny stuff. And, and we're going to have a jump house. And we're going to have maybe some four-wheelers and stuff like that. But you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see something happen that said, Lord had to do that. Only the Lord could do that. And that's why we're going to meet here. We're going to meet here Friday night and have an unusual church service. I want you to make up your mind right now. Well, I'm tired on Friday, preacher, and I work all day. And I Go home, take your nap, and get up and come on up here and stay and pray a while. I believe it'd be worth it. 
One soul is rescued from hell. One soul. Amen. Let's get in this hall and pray tonight.